Hello everyone, this uh, little bit of uh, commentary on uh, <clears throat> some, some stuff I, I saw today on Twitter. There's this guy by the name of uh, Nicholas Drummond who uh, claims to be a defense industry analyst and consultant specializing in land warfare. UK advisor to um, KMW, uh, the German company, and uh, Eppen Herstel, ex-British Army officer. He's expressed his own quite clearly. And uh, he's talking about the uh, NGSW program, which I have a lot of thoughts on, and uh, many other people on YouTube do. <clears throat> Mine tend to differ from most of the videos that you've probably seen, though. So anyway, it starts off with, the Army's Next Generation Squad Weapon program has been controversial. Mm, depends who you're talking to. I don't know if the Army's ever actually considered it controversial. <clears throat> Few people expected SIG to win. That statement is blatantly false. Now, I don't know what he, you know, knows from his side of the pond, so to speak, um, but most people I saw over the last several years that the program was going on, uh, prior to SIGS actually winning it last year, assumed SIG would win, um, with the only hesitancy being the fact that SIG had already won the pistol competition. Uh, they thought that maybe the Army would choose someone else because they didn't want to give SIG everything. Now, the reason they thought SIG would win is because the SIG submission was most similar to what the Army already used. And they assumed, and I think we can say assumed rightly based on hindsight, that the Army would not want to switch to something that was too dissimilar to the M4 and M16. And the SIG spear was, well, the least dissimilar. Uh, in both ammunition type and, uh, more importantly, in uh, control functions, you know, how you use the weapon. So anyway, so he says um, the uh, considers uh, SIG's approach uh, to be an evolutionary one. Sure, whatever. Uh, the smart money was on Textron. And I find that kind of laughable. Uh, I don't know what smart money he's referring to. Uh, but like I said, most people assumed SIG would win. Or most people that I saw. Um, of course, that's limited to everyone I saw making comments and everyone making videos. But still, I, I think that's accurate, at least for what people's opinions were in the United States. And then uh, like he said, um, Textron and its innovative case telescope ammunition and weapon technology. Uh, and we'll get to their um, case telescoped ammunition because, of course, that stuff is mm, something like 30 decades old at this point. Um, anyway, so he goes on. This is the whole tweet thread, next tweet, um, talking about uh, the caliber a little bit. And then the third one. The NGSW competition was about how to package a U.S. government furnished uh, 6.8mm projectile in the smallest possible cartridge and weapon system. Three companies were down selected, and it has a picture of the 6.8 projectile that Textron was going to use. That's it. Now, that is my reason for why Textron was never going to win. And of course, of the three companies selected, uh, Textron, uh, General Dynamics, uh, which that program later moved to True Velocity, who was making the ammo, um, and SIG, uh, Textron was the one that dropped out first. And the reason Case Telescope, I think, will never, ever be adopted for military use is because the round can be put in a magazine backwards 
and it will fit and you won't necessarily realize that you put it in backwards. Yes, you can feel which end has the tip and which end has the uh, primer, but the fact is the round can go in the magazine backwards and can be chambered backwards. And if you've seen the inside of the Textron weapon, and there is one video on YouTube where they take it apart and they show you how it works, the case telescope ammo goes into the chamber and then the chamber, after it fires, moves down and then there's a rammer rod which um, pushes it through. Uh, well, that, that depends on where it is in the firing cycle. Either it gets pushed through um, the chamber uh, by the rod, uh, by the round that's following it, or it gets uh, pushed through by a rammer, I believe. <clears throat> Don't quote me on that. Go find the video. Point being, it can be pushed through the chamber, so it has to be designed in a way such that it will go through the chamber. It has to essentially be a cylinder. And if you make your cartridge a cylinder, then it's really easy to put it in backwards. And that is simply unacceptable uh, when it comes to a military firearm. And that is the reason I believe case telescope ammunition will never, ever be used in military service. Um, and people can talk about, oh, technology needs to be matured and whatever. Dude, the technology is 30 years old at this point. <laughs> it's been matured. Uh, the problem is <laughs> the underlying uh, nature of its design, what it, how it has to be shaped. <laughs> That's the problem. Anyway. And, and that's why I'm like, are you, are you serious? Smart Money is the one that was on Textron? Because that doesn't sound very reasonable. I kind of thought most people were like, well, smart, not smart money, but if they're going to go radical, they were going to go with the True Velocity Palmer stuff. Because um, that did bring some pretty serious advantages in terms of uh, weight savings. Anyway, so he goes on to uh, talk about uh, SIG's uh, particular solution for the ammo um, and how it doesn't really save that much weight. Um, which is like, eh, okay, but it, it still is lighter than 7.62 uh, by 51. Um, and then he mentions uh, recoil being a concern. <coughs> except in a semi-auto weapon. Like, there are a lot of things you can do in terms of tuning it to um, get rid of recoil, because, uh, quite frankly, it's not a bolt action. Um, talks a little bit more about uh, SIG using their new casing style for both 762-51 and 65 Creedmoor. And then mentions the uh, 6.5 by 43 lightweight intermediate caliber cartridge, or LICC, which is actually pretty interesting. <clears throat> uh, developed by FN. Although most recently I thought I saw that the reason FN actually revealed that at this past SHOT Show was because the program... Uh, that it was being developed under ended. And since they no longer had any kind of army program, development contract, whatever, um, they were going ahead and showing everyone, hey, look what we came up with. And then he goes on to talk a little bit more about it. But anyway, point being, very surprised at what he said in terms of where he thought it was going. And uh, then you get to the comments. And the, the comments are uh, almost anything having to do with the NGSW are uh, often laughably ignorant. And uh, so this first one is like, 
<clears throat> always had two problems with the NJSW. One, the weight saving is negligible, uh, and weight saving compared to 7.62, um, I assume. And, uh, you know, volume is similar, meaning less ammunition can carry compared to 5.56, and it's like, well, yeah, 5.56 is tiny. You're, you're never going to avoid that. It's the nature of physics. You can't get a larger caliber, you know, going at reasonable speeds and, and not have it bigger than 5.56. Because on the grand scheme of things, 5.56 is small, like very small, when it comes to rifle calibers, like period. And then the guy follows it up with, might as well just go to 7.62. And I'm like, dude, do you have any clue how much better 6.8, even in its brass case form, is over 7.62? Um, and, and I actually did a um, energy comparison between uh, 6 8 by 51 which is, with its 135 grain bullet out of the brass cased ammo, not the hybrid case, just the plain brass case, out of a 13 inch barrel. And Alabama Arsenal um, had videos with this information. And then comparing that to uh, M80 ball. Um, and I think I may have had the stuff for M80A1, um, but that's the information on that's a little harder to get. Um, but anyway, comparing the two out of a 13-inch barrel with a spear, and uh, out of a 13-inch barrel, barrel brass case to brass case, 6A by 51 had 200 foot-pounds more energy at the muzzle. And with its ballistic coefficient, the difference in energy is simply going to expand the further out you go. So don't for a second tell me that 7.62 is just as good, because that is flat out wrong. And then this guy follows up with, <clears throat> the rifle is massive. I was like, well, I mean, yeah, it's going to be bigger. <clears throat> but guess what? <laughs> it doesn't actually weigh that much more than an HK416. Now, of course, HK416s are kind of heavy because their piston system is quite heavy. Um, not that all piston systems are heavy, just theirs is. And, uh, yeah, their quad rail is kind of heavy and some of their barrels are kind of heavy. Depends which barrel you get with it. Anyway, point being, <clears throat> the uh, six beer is not actually that bad. So that uh, kind of concludes my little uh, <laughs> set of thoughts on this uh, NGSW topic. And I have a few more, but uh, that'll suffice for today. Thanks, and have a good day.